everybody and big welcome to a competitive gameplay match. In this video I am playing Oscar, a Demir commander that can win an instant speed by utilizing discarded tricks. He more or less gives everything madness. I've played him before and I really like the commander. Now in this match we're going up against Gruul Minsk, the planeswalk version. This commander is piloted by Jason. Now the upside with this version, there's a Naya version, is that you have interaction, you can deal damage to things when you sacrifice something and you get to draw cards. The negative part with it is that you can't sit and sacrifice continuously throughout the same turn. So it's still a Hulk deck, it's just a little bit of a different Hulk pile. With us also we have Snuske, who's playing Aramix and Krom, typical Adnas deck. And lastly with us we have Pontus playing Dargo and Tumna, a Mardu Adnas deck. Those are the fighters for this match. Now let's take a look at my opening hand. Alright, so we are third in turn order, and we have a Vamp Tutor and a Gemstone Caverns, so we can do like start game, Vamp Tutor have two mana, but like, that's good, that's great, but look at our hand, it's it's just lands. We gotta mulligan this, I, even though I kind of really want to keep the Vamp Tutor and the Gemstone Caverns here. Completely opposite, no lands. Yes, cool cards, but no lands. We're gonna mulligan again. So we have a Gilded Drake that can steal a Tumina here. Honestly, I don't think this is a hand we're gonna keep. We're gonna go to five. Right now it feels like I should have kept my first seven. We just lands in it. This hand doesn't have anything that develops into something. Super happy. Never punished. We have a Mana Crypt. We have a Demonic Tutor. We have a Demonic Consultation. We have a Oppo Agent. Dream Tutor. Oh, this hand is golden. What do we do here? Like, we have to throw away free. If this would have been my opening seven, I would, like, be so happy right now. We have to throw away free cards. Grim Tutor's one. We remove the Demir Signet as well. We're lacking the... We, like, we have two tutors for... We have one tutor for Fasas, so to say. And then we have Consult in our hand. But we don't have a follow-up. Or we don't have the mana for it afterwards. So there's a risk here a bit for... I think the opponents we're playing against are very tutorish. They, they do tutor. So I think I'm gonna throw away the consult here. With this hand, we have a we have a definite tutor with demonic tutor. We can tutor with oppo agent, so we can solve problems with this hand. We're very far behind. Like we we lost a lot by discarding those three cards here. But we have great interaction versus decks that are tutoring quite a lot. We have some ramp and we have demonic tutor. So this hand can get to places. Fun fact: Pontus is also mulligan leaning down to four. See, you gotta mulligan aggressively to get those awesome hands. Like, honestly, this hand is better than my first hand. Minsk begins by passing an Allosaurus Shepherd, and then he passes the turn. Turn goes to Armix and Krom, who plays a Mana Confluence, who cast a Dark Ritual, and then he casts a Mox Diamond, and pitch a Forbidden Orchard, and then he uses two of the black from the Dark Ritual to cast an Arcane Signal. For a small time there, I thought he was actually gonna do, like, Audenosium here, and then he casts uh, Krom, Armix. Nice, good start. And then he passes the turn to me. I'm gonna play a Marsh Flats and a Mana Crypt and uh, pass the turn. We drew a Necropotence. That's amazing. We just need a little bit more mana for it. If we can get free black, get a commander play, cause Necropotence, we can do cool things with Oscar. Pontus draws a card, plays a land and passes the turn. Turn goes to Minsk, who cracks a fetch land, finding a Taiga. And then he passes the turn. I have a response to you, fetch land, Pontus. I wanna oppo agent that fetch land. <laughs> I have a policy. I always kill my friends first. <laughs> All right, what do you have in your hand? Oh my god, that's... All right, you can hide those uh, poor sad cards. Give me bad lands. So stealing a land with Oppo Agent isn't that huge, but considering I'm trying to actually win with Necropotence here, that's quite good. Also, I, I kinda need land drops, I didn't have a land in my hand. And now I can cast my Demonic Tutor and something, e like, I need a lance. And like, getting Anti-Search into play early game is good. I mean, also, we killed a player. Especially, we killed Pontus, that's, that's the important player to kill. 
But now we really need to worry about Armix and Chrome here, who has developed a really good board state. It caused a phantasmal image. This is really bad, actually, because I wanted I wanted to use my demonic tutor, and he's using the phantasmal image to become a copy of my opposition agent. He attacks at Jason with his Armix. I was a little bit scared he was actually gonna attack at me, killing my op agent there, but I he can kill the op agent later, I guess. Jason takes three damage. Then I'm gonna take my turn. I'm uh, playing Badlands that I've stolen from Pontus. I'm gonna announce and cost Oscar. I currently have one CMC zero in my graveyard, so he costs four, I'm paying four. He's on the stack. Pass the turn. The reason I'm actually keeping blockers here is because if Armix attacks at me, he can kill one of my creatures, but then I can block and kill the Armix. Pontus plays Blood Crypt. That's really positive for him. And then he costs the Lion's Diamond that we saw and costs Tumna. I honestly think this is the right play because I mean, his hand was garbage, he needs to get back into the game, and Tumna can draw cards for him. Sometimes you just gotta accept the horrible situation. <laughs> Turn goes to Minsk, who plays a Gaia's Cradle. And then, nice, he cost a Collector Oof. And then he passes the turn. I don't like that collector oof. But I don't think the Armix is doing that either. And I think he cares more about it than me. We we sadly don't that have that much to do. That op agent really destroyed. But apparently, Armix is passing the turn. I'm gonna untap and draw a card. I take three damage from the mana crypt. I'm gonna cause Deadly Rollick right now on your Phantasmal Image Oppo Agent, which is gonna trigger it so it's sacrificed, so it doesn't go to exile, but it still dies. It's doing the job. Then I'm gonna cast a Demonic Tutor. Snuske, the Chrome Armix player, cast a Fierce Guardianship. No response, my Demonic Tutor is counterspelled and I pass the turn. I was a little bit sad. He attacks at Jason with his Tumna, and Jason takes two damage. This is giving Pontus a card draw. And like Pontus is slowly getting back into the game, but here he passes the turn, no land drop. Pontus currently has two cards in his hand, and turns goes to Minsk. Minsk plays a forest, and costs a 4 CMC Minsk. He creates a Boo token, use the plus one ability to put three plus one plus one counters on Boo. Actually, I think he should put it on the Collector Oof, because Collector Oof is something he kind of want to protect. In any case, he attacks at Pontus with his Boo dealing 4 damage to Pontus. I actually think he should have attacked at uh, Krom here, because Pontus is kind of very out of the game, and Armix is still in a pretty good position. But in any case, turn goes to the Armix and Krom, Krom deck. And he passes the turn to me. I'm gonna untap and draw a card. I take 3 damage from the Mana Crypt, play Cavern of Souls, naming Wizards, and then I'm gonna pass the turn. Pontus draws a card for turn and goes to combat with Tumna at Tum at Jason, and Jason takes two damage again. And he pays a life gain, well, he gains two life, so he's netting plus one life, and draws a card with Tumna. And then he costs a Sol Ring. <laughs> That is worthless because of the collector roof. And then he passes the turn to Minsk. This game is getting slowed down quite well. Now, on Minsk's turn, he sacrifices Boo to deal 4 damage to my opposition agent, killing it and drawing cards with his ability. After drawing 4 cards, he plays a Mountain. And then he costs a Treasonous Ogre. You can pay life to gain a red mana from this. He then uses the Treasonous Ogre's ability to pay 15 life to gain 5 red mana. And then he uses these creatures to pay for the Call of Calling x equals to 5. The Call of Calling resolves and he finds Kiki Jiki the Mirror Breaker. And he pays 6 more life into Treasoner's Ogre, gaining 3 more red mana. No, 2 more red mana. And then he casts the higher scout that wins the game together with Kiki Jiki. The tower scout resolves as everyone is passing priority on it. And Minsk activates Kiki Jiki targeting tower scout. And here he wants to go infinite. But in response, Chain of Vapor on, and the Tower Scout is returned back to Minsk hand to combo off and win next turn. This also makes the ability Fissile, because Kikijiki doesn't have a target anymore. Or well, the target was there, but the target have to be there for Kikijiki's ability to resolve. So no token is coming into play, so this stops the combo. Minsk doesn't copy the Chain of Vapor, his combo is stopped here, great work from Chrome, and he passes the turn. Armix goes to combat and attacks Jason with Armix, triggering Armix. And he discards a Brain Freeze, giving Kikijiki minus minus, and Kikiki dies. 
I'm really happy about this outcome actually. And then Jason takes 3 damage, goes down to 7 life. And Krom, Armix cost a Mystic Remora. In response to the Mystic Remora, I'm gonna cost a Vamp Tutor. Vamp Tutor resolves. I'm putting Bazaar of Baghdad on top of my library. I'm not gonna use it the moment I actually draw into it because I will pretty much discard my Necropotent. That's bad. Uh, but it's a value and to get back into the game. Uh, it's not great, but we need something. I, if I had a card in my hand, it would be amazing, but it's it will get us there. And I have no further response to Mystic Remora. Turn goes to me, I untap and I draw, and I'm gonna play Bazaar of Baghdad. I am passing turn after this. So we just need to get rid of Collector Oof, which is going to happen eventually here, because Jason is kind of dying. Speaking of combat, Pontus is now attacking with Tumnat's uh, Chrom and Armix for two damage. And then we just need one more black mana and we can Necro. That's going to be awesome. Pontus finds a command tower. He's so back into the game here. He currently has two mana. Pontus costs a Rite of Flame, giving a card draw to the Mystic Remora Armix player. And then he plays Professional Phase Breaker. And then Pontus passes the turn to Minsk. Kikiyiki is now dead, but he might still have something cool to do. He did draw a lot of cards with his Minsk ability, and he recreates Boo! Play a Verdant Catacomb as land for turn, sacrificing the Verdant Catacomb. He's currently at 6 life, so he's getting very low. Finding a basic forest with his Verdant Catacomb. Pay 1 green mana for a Tinder Wall. That's actually kinda good, because that's a blocker. Then he plays an Outland Liberator that can sacri be sacrificed to destroy an artifact or enchantment. He's plusing 1 on Minsk, giving a lot of counters to Boo. And then he passes the turn, keeping the Boo as a blocker, which is kinda good. I mean... Armix pays for the fish and draws a card for turn. Plays a Mox Upol that doesn't do anything because of the collected oof. He goes to combat and attacks Jason with Armix. Armix trigger goes on the stack and he discards a Flusterstorm to give the oof minus minus. And this is why I actually thought that he should have put the plus one counters on the oof instead of the boo. And the boo basically blocks and hampers the Armix there and it's very dead. Turn goes to me and I draw a card. And I'm gonna pass the turn. So we drew Mystical Tutor, that's great. Uh, we can now activate Bazaar and get some amazing value. We don't need to discard Necropotence here. We can basically just sit back and try to get somewhere slowly here. No one is like winning fast. Like interactions have been dealt with here and there. Pontus though has a bunch of cards, I don't like that now. Pontus is like getting back in this game. Pontus attacks with Tumna at Snuske and Facebreaker at me. I can't block it, so I take two damage. Tumna draws two cards. And, like, I really think Pontus is uh, pretty good here. From uh, Oppo turn one on him. Tumna has crawled back here. I mean, we played a lot of turns, so he eventually gets there. Pontus costs an Astra Oddsmaker, more value. I would love to have an Astra Oddsmaker in this deck, by the way. And then he costs a Loyal Apprentice. Wow, that's a board state. And then he passes the turn to Minsk. Minsk goes to his turn, untaps, and draws a card. He plays Yaeva Maya Cradle of Growth, turning everything to force. That's great, because now my Bazaar Baghdad can tap for green mana, which it's never going to do. He costs a Sylvan Tutor. He pays four mana for the Mystical Remora. He finds Protean Hulk and puts it on top of his library. He plus one on the Minsk and puts more counters on Boo. Boo is now a 7-7. Seven, seven. And then he passes the turn. Turn goes to Krom and Armix. That doesn't pay for the Mystic Remora, we're really happy to see that one disappear, and he passes the turn to me. In the end step, I'm gonna activate Bazaar of Baghdad before my turn to draw two. Little bit sad about the draws here, we're gonna draw, discard two lands and a Mystical Tutor. I'm gonna pay one blue and cast the Mystical Tutor with my Oscar here. I'm going to find Frantic Search and put Frantic Search on top of my library. Then I would like to go to my turn and untap and draw a card. So, with Frantic Search, we can actually go for it. We can maybe win. <laughs> we have 24 lives. It's maybe better to... The chance of winning here isn't ultimate. But I think we're gonna YOLO and see if it works. It's so fun if it works. I'm gonna tap like this. Cast Frantic Search. I'm currently tapping my Underground Sea to cast Frantic Search together with my Mana Crypt, tapping Cavernous Souls and Badlands for Black and Colorless. Floating Black and Colorless. Frantic Search on the stack. It resolves, I draw two. I'm untapping my two lands, three lands. I'm gonna discard Necropotence and Notion Thief. 
I'm now going to pay Black Black and cast Necropotence and let Notion Thief go to the graveyard. Necropotence uh, resolves Land Drop Swamp. I want to pay 23 life going down to one life remaining. So I have 23 cards currently in my exile that I'm gonna put into my hand. However, in response, Armix costs Ad Nauseum. Snuske finds something amazing. He costs Pyroblast to get my commander before I go to my end step. This is great because this means I won't win this turn. In response, I'm activating Bazaar of Baghdad. I'm gonna draw two. I discard Snuff Out and I discard Rhystic Study. I can't pay for either. I have no response to Pyroblast. My commander is dead. Then my entire exile will go to my hand and I have a huge hand. So that Red Elemental Blast was spot on perfect. Uh, if he didn't have that, I would actually have uh, won this game. Because I, I find Lion's Eye Diamond, I find a Praetor's Grasp, I find Snap to untap some mana, I find a Mana Vault. With this, I can take Fastest Oracle from someone and I can untap Snap for some more mana. And I have a Doomsday. <laughs> I have a Doomsday. I, I can't actually cause Doomsday though. But I, I think I would have been able to put up together a, a win here. And uh, But the Red Elemental Blast killing Oscar was perfect. I'm dead. Uh, Pontus goes to combat, he, he kills me, I'm out of the game. And then he spreads out the attackers a little bit everywhere, so he's gaining three card draws from Tumna, sending the top there at Jason because Jason doesn't have any flyers. So Pontus draws three cards. I'm a little bit happy I was able to put together a Necropotence win attempt there with a the frantic search using my mana crypt to gain more black mana for the Necropotence. But now we will see who uh, wins this. My <laughs> my bets are on Pontus casting a Grand Abolisher. <laughs> I feel great putting him on, on the op agent turn one there. Mox Opal follows up with mana crypt. <laughs> Lots of uh, awesome mana and cause a demonic tutor. Uh, here, with that amount of mana, he should have the game here, I think. Looking at this board state, I think I was the right decision to try to go for it, basically. Trying to win before this board state. Because the risk of, like, not getting the turn back means that you can't get the chance. Even though I could have won, and I can't win in instant speed with Necropotence. I can win with everything else. I can win with Doomsday instant speed. I can win with fastest consult instant speed. Yes, I can't win in instant speed with Necropotence. However, Pontus is finding Undual Breach, casting the Undual Breach. Now, Jason has an interaction on the board state, a creature that can sacrifice and destroy an enchantment. However, with the Grand Abolisher, you can't activate that creature, so the Undual Breach is safe. And then he cast Demonic Tutor from the graveyard using the Unwold Breach. And he cast Dargo because he's been sacrificing so many different things here and there. And then he cast Altar of Dementia. And this wins. So he can sack Dargo, milling 7. This is now decreasing Dargo's costing cost. So Dargo will always cost 1 red mana, always paying for the commander tax. And he has a Lion's of Diamond in his graveyard, so he can Unwold Breach. Lions of Diamond for exiling free cards and then with Dargo basically mill out his entire graveyard deck. And then he mills until he finds Birgi and casts Birgi. Here, with Birgi and Altar of Dementia and Dargo, he has an infinite combo where he can mill out us infinitely. He also has a Mayhem Devil and can continue the loop and with Mayhem Devil he has infinite damage. GG's Pontus! See, sometimes even though you're getting up agent turn one, just sit there and try to get back and you eventually get it. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like what I do and you wanna support me, feel free to share my videos or even checking out my Patreon page. Also, purchasing cards from the TCG Player's website using the affiliate link in the description below of the video will also help the channel grow. So a big thank you to all of you.